Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. Every week, we celebrate our supporters through shout-outs and personal birthday messages. We think this is also a fun way for us to hear about all the amazing places that you, our listeners, come from. I'd like to say hello to Rudy from Downeyville, California. Your mom loves you so much. And hello and congratulations, Mira, on your graduation from kindergarten. Mommy Khaloud and Daddy Tariq love you more than you can imagine. Happy belated birthday to Oliver, who turned six on June 16th. Nika and Peter and June love you and can't wait to listen to another story about Bernice with you. Happy sixth birthday to Connor and congratulations on moving up to first grade. Mama loves you forever and always. Happy birthday to Claire, who is turning five years old on June 17th. From mom, dad, and your big sister, Sadie. Happy birthday to Leon from Sydney, Australia, who is turning six on June 17th. Mommy and daddy love you very much. Happy fifth birthday to Redford on June 18th. Love mom and dad. Your love of stories fills their hearts with joy. You'll write many of your own soon. Happy birthday to Camille in Victoria, BC, who is turning eight on June 18th. Honey, daddy and mommy love you very, very much. Happy birthday to Nate, who is turning eight on June 20th. Love Hannah, mom and dad. Happy birthday to Josie Quinn from Orlando, Florida, who is turning six on June 21st. From your mom, dad, and big brother, Rowan. Happy birthday to Arthur, who is turning five on June 21st. Mommy and daddy love you so much. Happy sixth birthday to Rio. Mommy loves you so much, you are the best son. Happy birthday to Callister, who is turning seven on June 22nd. Mommy and Daddy love you so much and are so proud of you for finishing the first grade. Happy birthday to Teddy Shimmick, who has a birthday on June 22nd. Happy birthday to Emma, who is turning 12 on June 22nd. Happy birthday to Katie in East Norriton, Pennsylvania, who is turning seven on June 22nd. Mama, Dee Dee, and Connell love you very much. And happy birthday to Clark, my better half, who also has a birthday on June 22nd. Happy birthday to you all. To reserve your special shout out, please visit sleeptightstories.org support. We can't wait to celebrate with you. Now on to our story. Red cannot believe what the note says. What could this mean? As the group eats their pizza, they decide what they are going to do to try and find out more about the note. As they are trying to figure out the clues, they come up with a name, which leads them to the library. Transfer Student, Part 16. Red picked up a slice of pepperoni pizza and the topping immediately slid off onto her plate, leaving her with a dry piece of triangle-shaped bread. The last time she had pizza with the gang, the same thing happened. But that time, it fell on her new pants. Ugh. You have to fold it in the middle, Kurt said, laughing at her. Don't they have pizza where you come from? No, Kurt, they don't. Why couldn't everyone just eat tofu? It's so deliciously bland and gray, Red thought. If I needed exciting food, 
I would eat some honey cakes, which are just about the best food I have had since I landed on this all too colorful planet. Since arriving, Red has made more and more friends. The kids at her school were pretty open to accepting people different from them. How else would Charlie, with all his sneezing and complete lack of fashion sense, have so many friends? But Red still felt out of place. All the gang seemed so at ease, laughing and chatting like they'd known each other forever. Maybe I need to relax more, Red thought. It might be easier if the smell of pizza wasn't so overwhelming. The school was a scent-free zone. Perhaps everywhere else should be a greasy, pizza, smell-free zone. Yuck, so much cheese. After taking another small bite, Red glanced around. Alexa was struggling with a particularly gooey slice of cheese pizza. Kurt was on her fourth slice, and Charlie was in the middle of a sneeze attack. Rachel, as usual, had her nose buried in a book, even while chewing. Red felt better seeing them all so engrossed in their own worlds. Red, you want another slice? Alexa added, noticing her plate of cheesy goo. We've got plain old greasy cheese, just in case you're not into all the toppings. Red shook her head. Thanks, but I, um, I'm not feeling as hungry as I thought I was. I might be too excited about the note. Red was more nervous than excited. What if it led to clues as to why she and so many others were here? My mother gave me some beef broth if you want to have that instead. Charlie laughed between sneezes. It's yummy delicious. Kurt chuckled. Yeah, right. I saw you pouring one bottle in the sink the other day. You are just trying to see if Red finds it as disgusting as you do. Don't worry, Alexa. I'll eat Red's portion just so it won't go to waste. It's a mystery to me as to where all the food you eat goes to, Charlie said, with tomato sauce all over his face. Do you have a pizza-eating cat somewhere or something? Kurt flexed her bicep, pointing at it with a finger and smiled. Charlie rolled his eyes, but smiled back. Speaking of mysteries, can we get to ours? That note we found is interesting. Red found it alarming. If her suspicions were right and the AID got wind of it, she would be in trouble again. That was just what she needed. Another visit from Ms. Misty and Mr. Shade of the Bureau. Alexa nodded, wiping her hands on a napkin before pulling the yellowed paper from her pocket. All right, let's break this down. From the red planet, they did descend, in shadows where the branches bend. Seek the place where stars align. Proof awaits in Earth's design. Red planet must be Mars, Rachel said, looking up from her book. So we're dealing with something Mars-related? Charlie snorted. Mars? Really? Next you'll tell me we'll find little green men. Rachel rolled her eyes. Not little green men, but maybe something left by them or related to that. We need to take this seriously if we want to solve it. I'm all for taking our mystery seriously, but let's not start expecting to find something left by aliens, Kurt said laughing. What it sounds like to me is a wonderful gag. Yeah, I agree. But we should continue, Red said. Okay, let's break it down, Rachel suggested, pushing her glasses up. First line, from the red planet, they did descend. Mars, easy. Second line, in shadows where the branches bend, Alexa continued. I'm thinking a place with big bendy trees. Remember that old oak in the park? 
The one that looks like it belongs in an old horror movie? Kurt asked, munching on another slice. Yeah, I know the one. Exactly, Alexa nodded. Now, seek the place where stars align. That has to be the observatory, right? Where else do stars align? That makes sense, Red said. Is there one nearby? Dr. Hart's old observatory is close, Charlie said. And proof awaits in Earth's design, Rachel said thoughtfully. Something hidden in the ground, maybe? Or in the observatory itself, Charlie added. We need more info on this Dr. Hart. What if she left more clues? I could use my phone to search. Not everything is online, Rachel pointed out, especially old stuff. We should check out the library. They might have old records or something about Dr. Hart. Rachel nodded. Good idea. Plus, it's a good excuse to get out of the house and away from screens. I never thought I'd hear you say that, Alexa teased. Miss Bookworm wants to leave the house. Well, when the internet fails, books prevail, Rachel retorted with a smirk. Let's finish up here and head out, Red suggested. The library should be pretty quiet on a Saturday afternoon. As the gang polished off the last of the pizza, the group began gathering their things. Kurt grabbed an apple for the road, still hungry despite the pizza. Always thinking ahead, Charlie said, shaking his head. Hey, I need my snacks, Kurt replied with a grin. Alexa led the way as they left her house. The library was just a short walk away, and the conversation shifted from the mystery to the amount of yucky stuff that must be produced by Charlie's nose every day. Do you ever get dehydrated? Kurt said laughing. All that mucus. I can suggest a good electrolyte drink if you'd like. You better watch out. I feel a sneeze coming on and you are pretty close, Charlie said, trying to tease Kurt back, but falling flat as usual. The gang arrived at the library, an old building in need of some serious updating. It's an interesting looking place, but having a pad is so much easier, Red thought. As they entered, the cool, musty smell of books greeted them, causing Charlie to sneeze. Okay, gang, Alexa whispered, clapping her hands. Let's get to work. Dr. Hart's secrets won't uncover themselves. The library was quieter than usual, the kind of silence that makes you want to whisper even when no one else is around. Red couldn't understand why libraries were always so quiet. Shouldn't we be happy to learn? While there were many places on Mars that were very quiet, places of learning were not one of them. The gang split up to cover more ground with Rachel Alexa and Charlie diving into the archives. At the same time, Red headed to the biography section. Kurt, of course, found a comfortable corner with a stack of sports magazines. Red often complained about the inefficiencies of finding information here, but there was something satisfying about the physical nature of books. These books certainly have a kooky smell. Red mumbled as she ran her fingers along the spines of dusty old books. Her mother loved the slowness of books and said everything back home was too sterile. Red could see the charm, but she wasn't a convert. On Mars, the mystery would have been solved almost immediately and they would have moved on to another topic. Evelyn Hart, Evelyn Hart, Red muttered, scanning the shelves. Aha, uh -huh. here we go. Red pulled out a thick, leather-bound volume titled Pioneers of Astronomy. Flipping through the index, she found her name listed under a chapter called Controversial Figures. 
she took the book to a table and started reading. About 20 minutes later, Rachel came over, carrying a hefty stack of newspapers and magazines. I found some old newspaper articles about Dr. Hart. She was quite the character. Listen to this, Rachel said, pointing to a passage in her book. Dr. Evelyn Hart was a respected astronomer in the early 1900s. She was known for her groundbreaking work on planetary movements, but she became a controversial figure when she claimed to have evidence of extraterrestrial life on Mars. Whoa, that's huge, Rachel exclaimed. No wonder she left those clues. Charlie joined, holding up a faded photograph. Look at this. It's Dr. Hart with her telescope. The caption says it was taken at the observatory in 1912, right around the time she made her claims. Alexa came over with a bundle of papers. Guys, I found her journal entries. They're in the special collections room. We need permission to access them, but the librarian said we can read the copies. They all gathered around as Alexa spread the photocopies on the table. The handwriting was neat, but hurried as if Dr. Hart had been writing down her thoughts as quickly as they came. March 15, 1912, Rachel read aloud. Tonight, I observed unusual lights over the Martian surface. They moved in patterns that suggest intelligent control. I must investigate further. April 3, 1912, Charlie continued. I have constructed a device to communicate with these beings. I believe they are aware of my presence. I fear ridicule, but the truth must be known. Look at this one, pointing to an entry from June 1912. I have buried the evidence in the garden of the observatory. If anyone finds this, know that I spoke the truth. The proof of Martian existence lies beneath the stars. That's it, Rachel said, her eyes wide with excitement. We have to go to the observatory. That's where she hid the evidence. Kurt finally sauntered over, a sports magazine still in hand. So, did you guys find anything interesting? Just the proof of Martian existence, Alexa said, rolling her eyes. No big deal. Kurt raised an eyebrow. Seriously? Charlie filled her in on what they found. Oh, come on. How is it that I am the only rational one here? How could she even see anything on Mars way back in in ancient times? You guys are going to be disappointed if you think this is anything other than a gag, Kurt said with a laugh. It might be a joke or a delusion, but there is only one way to find out, Red said, standing up and gathering papers. We need to get to the observatory. That's where Dr. Hart hid the proof. Before the gang left the library, everyone sent a message to their parents, letting them know where they were going. Charlie's mother was concerned that Charlie would catch another cold. I hope this is just some kind of fun discovery and not real evidence, Red thought while sighing. All right, since we all have permission, let's head to the observatory, Alexa said, leading the way. It's not far from here. As they walked, Rachel, glasses on the tip of her nose, kept flipping through the photocopies of Dr. Hart's journal entries. I can't believe she wrote all this down. She really believed she found something on Mars. Or she was just bored, Kurt interjected. Yeah, but remember, this was the early 1900s, Charlie pointed out. They didn't have the technology we have now. What if she saw something she couldn't explain with the tools available back then? 
Or what if it was all just a big joke? Kurt suggested, opening up a protein bar to eat. I mean, people have always been fascinated with aliens. Maybe Dr. Hart was just having a bit of fun. Or maybe she wanted to teach future generations about the importance of curiosity and exploration, Rachel added. Even if she didn't find real proof, she might have wanted to inspire others to keep looking. That's a good point, Charlie said. She was an astronomer. Her life was dedicated to studying the stars and planets. Maybe this was her way of keeping that passion alive, even after she was gone. They soon reached the edge of the park, where the silhouette of the old observatory loomed ahead. Red thought it looked like some kind of uncared-for antique. The dome was partially rusted, and vines crept up the sides, making it look unused. Wow, it's kind of creepy, Charlie said, shivering a little. Perfect place for hiding evidence, I guess. Is it still being used? Red wondered aloud. Alexa pushed open the gate, which creaked loudly. Come on, let's get inside before it gets too dark. They made their way up the gravel path toward the observatory's door, which wasn't locked. Walking inside, the interior was dusty and filled with old equipment and books. It smelled like a mix of aged paper and metal. Rachel's flashlight illuminated a series of star charts pinned to the walls, and an old telescope pointed skyward in the center of the room. So, where do we start? Kurt asked, looking around. We need to find the garden Dr. Hart mentioned in her journal, Alexa said. She said she buried the evidence there. Red was nervous. What's the worst they could find? A functioning pad? The gang walked through the observatory, eventually finding a door that led outside to a small, overgrown garden. I guess this is it, Rachel said, looking around. Let's see if we can find signs of where she might have buried something. The gang spread out, examining the ground for any disturbed patches of earth or markings. Over here, Alexa called softly. I think I found something. And that is the end of this part. Good night. Sleep tight.